Uh, welcome back to another episode of Fishing Without Bait, a lifetime without definitive expectations, where we look for people not to find themselves, but help create themselves. If you have the honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness to try a few pixie dust sprinkles of those, you're on your way. And, as an added bonus today, we continue our conversation with the delightful and insightful Regina Honey Badger. There's three defense mechanisms that people have honed to a razor jets, and they are avoidance, justification, and denial. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you were familiar with all three. Oh, that was my bag. (laughs) That was everything I was doing. And again, I wasn't really harming anybody, but I wasn't bringing what was what I think is the real social contract is you have to do the right thing no matter how hard it is and you have to pick up your suffering and bear it or you know that I mean that's that's the story that we keep retelling and people don't realize that even the non-religious people don't realize like we've been telling that story over and over again and and it's true it's like yeah it's terrifying to pick up that cross and bear it like if you know what's at the end but that's what gives you meaning that's what gives you to push through because if you don't find something like that if you don't find the heaviest burden that you can pick up and work at every day it's going to come through at least it did for me in this nihilistic narcissistic way of of living that was not meaningful like i mean i can't even get into how much you know mental anguish i was self crafting for myself because i was just avoiding my responsibilities well, absolutely. And it sounds like you, uh, you faced your demons. Yeah, it's an, that's a never ending, um, you know, lesson. I, I think, you know, every, you know, like, um, in the, in the psychedelic realm, we refer to that as like integrating the shadow. And I think that's also kind of, you know, tying it back to wrestling, what that persona was. It's like, you know, that's, that's who I can be. I can be this, you know, foaming at the mouth, just lashing out at everybody, just this very, um, unkempt, you know, un, uh, un, I don't want to say undomesticated, this just wild thing. Feral. Feral. Yeah, handles it very nice. <laughs> Feral. Yeah. Um, and it's like, you should know what that is. You should know that that, because that exists in all of us, that feral, that chaotic version, like that's in all of us. But you have to learn how to control it and you have to learn to integrate it every day. Life is neither fair nor unfair, what we try to get across to people. The only thing that you, I, or anyone has control over is how we react to mm-hmm. people, places, things, and situations. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that you talk about shadow work because that's what Carl Jung devoted a lot of his mm-hmm. time to. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Carl Jung. Yeah, and he he gets into it, you know, very, very well. And it's it's that lesson, you know, if you, if you stare into the abyss long enough, the abyss will stare back. And the difference is, is you can either let that consume you or you can let it, you can see what it is and you can go, okay, I know what you are now. And now I know how to avoid, not so much avoid you, but I know how to maneuver around that. Sounds like you were circling the abyss, Regina. Oh, for a long time. For a long time, yeah. And what you're saying is is that wrestling was your vehicle. How you pinned yourself to that. Oh, absolutely. I really think that where and I'm I'm one of those people that definitely feels like those things still happen for a reason. But I really think that if I had not found professional wrestling, like, you know, if I hadn't found Brandon K and the school and Dean Radford and Crusher Hansen and everybody who took part in my journey, it would not have kind of started to point that compass in another direction because I finally had some people in my life who again were promoting, you know, discipline and, you know, and, and just like, a big thing in wrestling that I think people struggle with is you have to be ready for the most brutal critiquing to get your craft down. And you, and if you fight that, you're only going to hinder your own progression. You have to be ready to just, I mean, it's funny now where I'll go to people and ask for advice. And if they don't give me enough like critique, I'm like, okay, I, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Like, tell me, like I'm a big I'm a big critique person in in my day job and anything I do because now it's like 
I want to know what I need to focus on. Like, okay, like you can always, there's always something you can work on. Um, you know, none of us are the perfect person. So tell me where to point my my spotlight at. Okay, like if it's this, you know, if I got to work on this particular technique, let me focus on that technique and then move on to the next thing. Okay. Sounds like you're talking about acceptance. Oh, yeah. And being able to accept, uh, we'll call them suggestions. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay, well, we believe in the 12-step world, Regina, that if you're present and aware the creator, the divine, is going to put people, places, things, circumstances, events in your life, if you're there to witness them and not what we call time traveling to the past or the future, mm -hmm. then they'll have some meaning for you. And it sounded like you had those moments of clarity that allowed you to make choices. Yeah, um, I, I really have to attribute a lot of that to my healing through psychedelics because one of the things that... A, it brought for me was one, it dissolved the ego that I had built up over the years and whether, you know, it was in self-preservation or, you know, this survival technique, because again, everybody has trauma, you know, everybody's had a bad hand dealt to them. But whereas before I would go, you know, the, the nihilistic route of like, Oh, you know, why me? Why me? It goes, okay, this is what I have. What can I do with this? And, that's what psychedelics really taught me to do is to regulate my emotions, not have, you know, this knee jerk reaction is to go, OK, this is our present situation. We can't do anything about yesterday and we don't need to worry about tomorrow. We need to worry about the now. Could you say more about the, the psychedelics? It's something that is uh, groundbreaking and on the forefront of depression, anxiety, PTSD right now. Yeah. So um, the. The thing about psychedelics that's really fascinating is um, they can actually create new neuropathways in the brain, and it breaks those cycles that I think we build up on our own. You know, I've I've noticed just from studying human behavior that, and from my own experiences, that it feels like once we kind of carve out this pathway in the brain, the brain really likes patterns. It really likes patterns. So even if it's an unhealthy pattern, when you start to divert from that, even if you're diverting to something healthier, the brain's like, no, no, no. Like, I want to hold on to this. Like, we're, we're used to doing this. We're used to being up all night drinking, and we're used to have being, having a Coke over in the morning, and I don't want to eat the vegetables, and I don't want to drink the water. And that's the really hard part, because you got to train your brain. And what I found with psychedelics is it really helped in the sense of my depression and anxiety where I would, my brain would spiral and hyper focus on that, you know, wanting to sleep for eight hours, like going to sleep for eight hours in the middle of the day was like, oh, well, when we wake up, everything will just be fine. And it's like, that's not reality. And it just dissolved that ego to one, humble me. And then two, it, I mean, in the end, it helped me get off of all my, I was on a hefty cocktail of SSRIs and SNRIs. And what had happened was I was experimenting with DMT and which is a pretty powerful psychedelic. And what happened was I noticed that I went three days without my depression medication. And anyone who's been on these even a short amount of time knows that you miss that dose by, for me, it was 10, 15 minutes. You start going into the, almost the withdrawal symptoms. Mm. And when I realized that I was able to go three days, I was like, something is happening in my brain chemically, you know, re you know, regardless of the whole perception change and all the kind of woo woo that comes with, you know, the sound of psychedelics. I was like, something chemically has to be happening in my brain for I'm, I'm not in bed sick right now. And that's when I really started exploring like, wow, these these pills, and I want to make a statement that, you know, this is not me in encouraging everybody just to like throw your medication out the window. Like I was very fortunate where I had a doctor who's very pro plant medicine. Um, he's actually how I discovered the medical marijuana program. I've been a patient of that for years and it's benefited me tremendously. But, you know, I said to him, I was like, these are not doing anything other than keeping my brain zaps away. I don't want to eat. I just want to sleep. I'm depressed and the, and COVID just spiked that through the roof sure. and it really 
just made me realize like how those things weren't actually helping me again it was just a pattern it was just a pattern like I was used to just taking my cocktail I was used to just trusting like okay whatever this person says like they're the doctor they must know and not listening to how I actually felt I think you're making a very valid point Regina most people go through life feeling that they're not heard we always talk about the requirements that it takes to be with you and one of them is to be understood to be listened to to be respected to be treated as an equal to be given the benefit of the doubt and the freedom to decide mm -hmm. and i always tell people that's a good litmus test and if you're not getting that from someone then why are they doing in your life mm -hmm. i refer to as planting flowers and pulling weeds absolutely and if there's one thing that anyone can take away from anything I'm talking about is if you have anybody in your life who objects to you making healthier changes, even if they don't maybe agree with the direction you're going or a method, you know, as long as you're not hurting yourself and you're not hurting other people, if you're making a genuine conscious decision to better your life and the people around you start to push back on that, you need to get rid of those people immediately. I don't care how lo long you've loved them. I don't care how long they've been in your life. Anyone who truly is a friend and truly loves you will say, I'm here to support you along your journey. We want to surround ourselves with people who not tell us how we can't do something. We want to surround ourselves with people who tell us how we can. Exactly. Give us encouragement and support. I often talk about I try to keep as many molecules out of a human being's body as possible. However, I always tell them that it's the action and effort. Uh, some of these medications can round the corner off the square, but it's action and effort that makes things go. Mm -hmm. Wishing and hoping and waiting, because most people live their life on wishing, hoping, and waiting for something to happen when it's action and effort. You're talking about cognitive restructuring. You're talking about neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. And uh, that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are the magic. So, uh, abracadabra. When, <laughs> when you think of the term abracadabra, what comes to your mind, Regina? I, I mean, for me, it's to, you know, manifest it. And for me, you know, manifesting through, through faith and through trust and listening to my intuition... Um, you know, even when it's like there's a lot of pressure to do something because it's, you know, it's the current thing or, you know, you have a lot of people pushing you in a direction. It's it's really manifesting through listening to your heart and listening to like what you truly feel in your heart is the right thing to do. It's a real word. It's Aramaic and it comes from the Bible's Jesus time. Roughly what it translates into I speak what I create, I create what I speak. So 90% I I of cognitive behavioral therapy is about changing the language in the way you speak to yourself. It's not necessarily learning new skills, Regina. A lot of it is unlearning old ones. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we, we're creating new neural pathways is just like how, how often did you practice wrestling moves? Oh, geez. Years. I mean, I still, I still practice them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you're a, seem to be a very sensitive, empathetic, uh, insightful young lady, uh, which kind of strays from the persona of the feral badger. <laughs> I watched some of your matches. Hey, uh, you, uh, you went into, you went into beast mode. <laughs> We're going to continue with our guest, Regina Honey Badger, on our next podcast. And a free prescription, my friends. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we suggest that you fish without bait. Please do a kindness for another and do a kindness for yourself. Forgive another and forgive yourself. If we are all not God's children, none of us are. Till all are free, none of us. Namaste. If you're interested in flying the colors of fishing without bait, click the shop icon on our website 
We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait.